All right. So we are live here on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Laura Meyer, and I want to introduce you to two really special people that are part of this Vision to Impact conversation, Heather and Dave. So Heather, why don't you go first and introduce yourself? Great. Thank you, Laura. Hi, Dave. Very excited to be with everyone today. Um, my name is Heather Reynolds, and I serve as Managing Director of Notre Dame's Wilson Sheehan Lab for Economic Opportunities, or more easily known as LEO. And we are a research shop here at the University of Notre Dame who is committed to reducing poverty in our country. Great. Dave? Hey, yeah, you guys. Hi, Dave Kyle. I'm the president of a company called Franworth that's all about scaling for-profit companies using a franchise model. Also founder of Franchise for Good. We'll talk more about that, what that means. Uh, and just a, you know, a long time franchising guy. I've been doing it since the late 1900s, I like to say, <laughs> uh, and have uh, led four franchise companies as CEO. And my name is Laura Meyer, and I'm the host of this event. I am a growth consultant to what was for for-profit brands. Now I'm in the nonprofit space, and I'm also a mentor to consultants. And today, what I wanted to do is just kick off a conversation that I think is really important that we've been having behind the scenes for almost mm -hmm. about a year now yeah. on what is needed to see nonprofits really grow and scale and thrive and how that landscape is changing and how some of the for-profit strategies that Dave and I have been using um, in the nonprofits that Leo serves um, has been providing some amazing growth opportunities. So. That's what we'll be talking about a little bit more today. And Dave, you were really the catalyst behind mm -hmm. this partnership. So mm -hmm. maybe you could share a little bit about what what drove that decision to to do nonprofit work after a super successful career mm -hmm. in the for profit space. Yeah, thank you, Laura, uh, and really appreciate you uh, starting this conversation uh, here with a, a larger group. And hi, everyone. Um, yeah, my so as I was joking, I have been franchising. My first experience franchising was the Haagen Dazs shop business back in 1999. So it really was the late 1900s uh, that I was in this, um, and then later served as CEO of three other franchise companies. And franchising is all about creating a system, taking a brand and a system, and helping businesses scale. And so what I found was that I led companies as diverse as selling ice cream. And then the last uh, company I led uh, as the franchise CEO is one called The Lash Lounge uh, that does eyelash extensions. So can you get any different in a business model from ice cream to eyelashes? Uh, and But the common denominator, which is where the seed of the idea came, was the tools that we use to scale franchise systems. You think about McDonald's or Marriott, or just pretty much any fast food, all of Boutique Beauty, all of Boutique Fitness. The reason that you know of those is those have scaled using a franchise model. The tools and how they do that is exactly the same, no matter if it's ice cream or eyelashes. And so, you know, I was, thank you, Laura, for saying that I have had uh, been lucky and had some success in my for-profit career. And I was seeking about how could I make an impact uh, in a different way? So I went through a program called Halftime that really uh, stepped back and said how I moved from success to significance in my life. And the idea came to me in a literal walk through the woods. I was literally walking through the woods and said, you know, why not? apply the, the all the tools and processes that we've been using, Laura, you and I have been using for decades in franchising and scaling. What if that were applied to the nonprofit space? So that was the seed of, that was the hypothesis that that could happen. And so with that, this was in uh, early 2020. So right at the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, and so that's the seed of the idea. Uh, and happy to talk more about how that evolved. But that's where the idea came from, Laura. Yeah, it's such an interesting journey because a lot of people don't make that switch, especially when they're at a place where they're kind of thinking about how do I want to wrap up my career? What are mm -hmm. some of the succession plans that I want to have in place, which I know is part of, you know, probably where you're at right now. And yeah. then also starting this whole new venture, mm -hmm. serving nonprofits as a nonprofit. It's so right. interesting. So how did, how did actually, I don't even know if I know how the two of you got connected. Well, yeah. What was that? Uh, it's a fun, it's a great, so let me tell you, uh, let me back up one quick second. And um, so we, we tried this once. So I, I was connected to a gentleman named Pat Hamill, who largest home builder in Colorado created this trade job training academy called the time Colorado home building academy. He was wanting to scale it. I was a scaling guy looking for something to scale. So we partnered and created what's called build strong academy 
and have taken it from one, and it does trade job training of people who want to become a plumber or electrician. There's a dearth of skilled labor in the U.S. This is a free training program to go train people. So we partnered and we actually did it. We, the hypothesis came true and we created what's called Build Strong Academy. My partner, Drew Brees, built an academy in New Orleans. We now have six open across the U.S. So it worked. Uh, and so uh, what brought Laura, or, uh, Heather and me together uh, was a common friend. So a woman named Sally Blount, who the first female dean of NYU and Northwestern Business School. So same, very successful. She and I were in the same halftime program seeking our journeys of significance. So Sally and I met, we're in the same group that spent a year exploring this stuff. Uh, and when she figured out what I was up to and we had some success with Bill Strong Academy, she's like, oh my gosh, you got to meet my friend Heather. Uh, and I'll let Heather tell her story from there. But um, Heather basically jumped in her car and drove to Ann Arbor <laughs> <laughs> to meet. And, uh, and that's really how it happened. So it's just a common friend. Is how, how it can be. Yeah. Laura, one thing I have is a good sniffer. So when someone like gives an idea and I'm like, ooh, I smell something really good here, I'm on the road. So I love it. Yeah. So Sally, um, I have the privilege of serving on the board of Catholic Charity Chicago, where Sally now is the CEO. And um, we were having a conversation one day about the challenges in our work mm -hmm. at Leo. You know, our goal is we want to create evidence so evidence can be put to use and be scaled. And we live in a world right now where about only 1% of programs being offered across the country have evidence behind them that they work. And that's why we exist, to make research accessible to the nonprofit community. So we make sure we understand what works and then we scale that up in a variety of ways. And so Leo, I was talking to Sally and I was explaining to Sally about the growth we have had mm -hmm. as an organization in more projects, more partnerships with nonprofits, more research studies that were underway. And I said, my biggest fear is, you know, a few years from now, these research studies are going to have results. Some of them are going to say, oh my gosh, we have a winner and I don't know anything about then how to take one to 10 to a hundred to thousands. And she said, oh my God, you got to meet my friend Dick. <laughs> and so uh, it was wonderful because Sally connected us, myself and one of my colleagues drove on up to Ann Arbor. And it was actually the Lash Lounge example that Dave mentioned that really helped me get my mind around what Dave's expertise and what really the franchise model could do for our work because he helped explain that, you know, when they dive into a company that's one or maybe three, four, five at the time, they really help identify like what was this, what is the secret sauce? What do you need in terms of the type of leadership who runs those kind of franchises? You know, all he really helped me understand kind of like all the parts of that and then what they do to accelerate that growth, to package that growth and to be able to scale things. And so um, really, it was a visit about a year ago um, to Ann Arbor that made me go, oh, my gosh, the water parted and there's Dave and his <laughs> here we go. I love that. And it was interesting because uh, it was just about a year ago that I got a call from Dave. So I yeah. did consulting work for the Lash Lounge, met Dave, was turned from a client to a mentor and now a partner. And he said, I really need you on this nonprofit work. And I was like, I don't know, Dave, like I'm not a nonprofit person. Are you right. sure? He's like, mm -hmm. no, I definitely need you. And I said, well, I'll mm -hmm. take one and see how it goes mm -hmm. and then yeah. fell in love with it. So we'll, we'll get we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> Heather, what what is it about this work that you find is often missing in the nonprofit mm -hmm. space? Like, why is this so needed? Yeah. Yeah. And maybe I should also note, you know, before coming to Leo, you know, I've been I've been at Notre Dame for four years. But prior to that, I'm a social worker by training. I spent 20 years of my career at Catholic Charities Fort Worth, the last 13 as their CEO. So my heart is really with direct service and making change to people's lives. But I would say that I saw two really big problems as it related from my provider days, and now I see this with our partners at Leo, that relates to scale. And the first is 
a marketing and branding problem. Mm -hmm. Um, Most nonprofits are already having to say no to people who walk through their doors way more than they're able to say yes. And so kind of what that has done, like I think generally to the culture of nonprofits over the years is who they market towards is donors, volunteers, not to service recipients and clients. And so you have this real gap in the industry where, you know, I didn't know how to market to clients. I didn't know if I wanted, frankly, to market to clients. And what you started to see, though, as organizations evolved, I know this was true with us at Catholic Charities Fort Worth. We had a hundred plus year history. You know, we were very much a basic needs assistance organization. And as we begin to make the shift to from treating the symptoms of poverty to really getting to the root cause so people could be on an upward journey out of poverty, we started to realize there was a real need to understand our target customer for that type of service and to understand how to talk about it and how to share about it and how to make people want to say yes. Um, It's a hard deal. And if nonprofits are listening, I hope this makes some sense. But we found it to be a really hard deal if if somebody called you, was about to be evicted, was calling for financial assistance. You can't just say like, great, how about a long-term five-year journey out of poverty through this training program? Like there needs to be more thought through and fleshed out. So that is like one big problem I see. And that's on the very front end. If you build it, they won't necessarily come. And how do you get mm-hmm. engagement of, of clients and understand your target customer and, and, and meet their needs? But then on the back end, once you have a model of service, Once you have um, evidence behind that model that this is working, how do you take it from local scale to, you know, maybe regional scale or five sites and then the thousands of sites? And that's the piece I would say, generally speaking, it's been the it's been more rare to see a nonprofit be able to do that well. And I know my time at Catholic Charities Fort Worth, that was a huge struggle as we were trying to take several programs from a couple sites in Fort Worth to um, other sites across the country because we had evidence behind them that they worked, but we didn't know how to do that. Laura, can I just add one thing that, uh, because I, what blew my mind when I met Heather, and I think this is where I thought of you and bringing you in is that, I, it just blew my mind that we that a non a, a, as a for profit business person who spends their whole time inviting people in to eat ice cream or have their eyelashes done or you know exercise right that's what we do we invite people in we convert them to members we invite them in um, I just assumed the nonprofit world if you're Catholic charities or corner to corner that we'll talk about in a minute that people would just come in like there wasn't that you didn't need to invite people in and so when I realized that 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 marketing that we do, you do exceptionally well, Laura. So that's why I called you was because I'm like, oh, I know who helped me go build the programs at the Lash Lounge and we do a phenomenal job today. I knew we needed to go uh, market in the nonprofit world. And I thought that to me was the big aha from a for-profit guy just dipping into a nonprofit that you really, yeah, you market to, as Heather said, you market to the donors and your board, but you're not marketing or inviting people in. I just thought you open the doors at Catholic Charities and people line up because it's a free service and, and added. So that's really where I think Laura, I'm like, oh, I know who's the best in class at this and said, I need your help to help, you know, go market and grow some of these in place. I love that you're bringing this up, Dave, because it's one of the realizations that I had always, I think, intuitively thought, but it was confirmed with this nonprofit work, which is that price is not a primary decision maker. Yeah for people, right? When you're asking them to be part of something, you're asking for their time, their energy, their sacrifice, you're asking them to overcome a lot of the internal objections that they have around their ability to find success with whatever it is that you're offering. And what was so interesting is when we took price out of the equation with nonprofit, because many of the programs that we're marketing are free or close to free, they there was still a similar process that needed to be followed in order to see a result. And I think many people, I think many marketers sort of underestimate 
the non-price objections that come up when people are making decisions, especially with a vulnerable population that may have limited beliefs, they may have a his trauma, his traumatic history, they may be having some of these experiences that get them that get in the way of them being able to get what they really want in life, right? And we've what that's been one of the most enjoyable aspects of this work is because I get to use all of that all of that psychological marketing for a, such a positive outcome. Um, and that's what has really made me fall in love with it. But I want to talk about some of the work that we've done together, because I think people who are listening, especially nonprofits, are like, great, like this sounds fantastic, but what does this look like? Like, what? How, how do you action this work so that you get a result? So I know, Dave, you've had some really amazing experiences with Franchise for Good. Um, and then also, let's talk about some of the case studies that we've had together and some of the successes that we've experienced while partnering. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want me to start with an example? Yeah. or? Um, yeah. yeah, maybe we could talk about I, corner to corner or any other example. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I can tee it up. And I, I mean, yeah. maybe or Heather, you can tee it up. But I, I think the idea was really, I think Heather said two things. One, we needed to go grow, help create a toolkit, create some mm -hmm. ways to help nonprofits grow in place, to mm -hmm. go add more people they serve. And Corner to Corner is a great example of that. Then the other thing that we'll talk about later um, that I'll talk about is helping, as Heather said, how do you go replicate? Mm -hmm. If someone is very successful in one market, how do you go take that and go add to different markets? So maybe, maybe Heather, you set the stage of who Corner to Corner is, and then maybe, and Laura, maybe you can talk a bit about Hey, what do we go deliver and how? Because it's a really amazing story. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So Corner to Corner is one of the most amazing nonprofits mm -hmm. you could meet. They are incredible. They are based out of Nashville, Tennessee, and the goal of their program, specifically um, the Academy, is to help um, Black women start, grow, and sustain their own businesses. And we met Corner to Corner through a funder connection a couple years ago, and they were so excited to work with Leo. They want to study. They want their model proven. They want to understand what's working about it. They were like, free research that you offer at Leo? Like, we're in. It, it, that wasn't just the free. That was a motivator, though, uh, Laura, as you said. But they were so eager. But you know, corner to corner, there were a couple barriers for us to even be able to do a study with them. And one of the biggest barriers was the, we knew there were plenty of Black women in the greater Nashville area who would be ideal clients for corner to corner, but they were having some hard time like accessing those clients. Mm -hmm. And they were doing a lot of really cool things to try to access clients, but didn't have a lot of the knowledge they needed about just really getting those people who walked through their door or reached out or looked at something to really convert. And so for us, for us at Leo to be able to do a study, we needed volume of people um, for it to be able to take off. And then also we wanted to make sure, okay, if we show evidence works, how does, you know, is this even possible to scale? And the first step of that is making sure you can fill current slots of a growing program that they mm -hmm. want to do. And so we knew this was one of the very big issues we needed to tackle with them, or there would be no ability for Leo to step in and, and do the research study. And so I called Dave and I said, okay, we have our first project we can work on together. This is what I need. Very eager organization to solve this. And Dave said, enter Laura. And so Laura, I'll, I'll leave it to you to share about your process with them. Yeah. And Dave is such a fantastic help and resource, just having had experience with so many different brands and so, so such a talented leader. So he queued that up for me in a way that was really helpful in the sense that, you know, I was looking at it very much like it would be a for-profit info product client because it's an educational product. And when I started asking them, they're talented marketers, the women that were running or that are running this organization with really good star power. I was like, if you know, you could take this show on the road, by the way, if you really wanted to. They're, they have that influencer type personality mm -hmm. and presence. So I immediately saw that. And I said, we're going to put this, we're going to put you into a webinar sales funnel, which is in the for-profit space, very typical. Some of you might've gotten sucked into those on a YouTube ad or Facebook ad. And 
if I uh, was behind that, I apologize. But it was, um, but what we did is we ended up putting that in a place for a nonprofit. And it's it's a pretty heavy marketing lift. So in the beginning, they were like, oh my gosh, what? Um, but then they realized what happens is, is when you create that type of system, you can start to develop a way to determine predictable results. So once one or two webinars took place, they started to realize, oh, if we get this many leads in and then we have this type of event, we can expect this type of show up rate, this type of conversion rate, and this type of um, enrollments. And as they're continuing to grow their operation, we went into a six month project with them. We've left them with so many assets that they can use for years to come to continue to multiply enrollments. So Heather, you know, I don't remember the exact number, but I they oh they more than doubled their they enrollment doubled. Yeah. in, oh, in yeah. a three month yeah. period. Yeah, their yeah. largest enrollment like to date was right around two hundred, and yeah. they had like four hundred and thirty people somewhere around that sign up, which is huge. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and it happened in a really quick amount of time. Yeah. I think it was, you know, maybe three, four months in yeah. and they were launching. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And a lot of it was just educating them on these steps. Like I didn't even use the words webinar funnel at first because I didn't want to intimidate them. I was like, <laughs> we're going to have a registration page. It's going to market a training. We'll call the training a masterclass. We'll deliver it on Zoom. There'll be a particular formula for how I'd like you to deliver it. And then we're going to write a lot of emails. There's a lot of emails that we're going to need to write and deploy. So I think they were a little bit like, what in the beginning? But then as we were doing it, they were like, this is awesome. Like they were running around, you know, trying to be at every single festival and they were making, you know, exhausting themselves doing all the marketing things when really all we needed to do was funnel all traffic into this one sales system, sales process that could then turn into predictable results moving forward because we're with them for six months, but they're with you for years. Mm -hmm. So right. we want them to continue to see that 100% you know, increase every six or eight months, even after they're done working with us. So that's been really rewarding. Well, and just like so many smaller ahas that were game changers along the way. Like I remember um, corner to corner, they would like open enrollment in May. Yeah. And it closed in August. And Laura was like, that never works. Like, <laughs> you need, there, it creates no urgency for yeah. the potential purchaser, you know, of that service. What you need to do is you have one of these master classes. You, for seven days, have an enrollment going on. Mm -hmm. And then you close it. And you do multiple of those. But it creates this urgency that gets people to say yes. Mm -hmm. That's one example of thousands. But just little tweaks like that uh, made a huge difference for quarter to quarter in their success in recruitment. Yeah. And we're in the middle of another example just like that, but very different. So it's not that a webinar funnel is always the answer, right? It's more thinking about what is the sales process that then could be handed to, back to franchise for good that they could use to replicate. And that's what we're doing right now with many of the nonprofits that we're partnering with. So the other one that we're working with that is going really well is called Kids to Leaders. It's a one week camp for children who have an incarcerated parent. Very different. You know, we're not, this is not a business opportunity. We're not going to send them through a webinar funnel. But what we need to do is we need to make sure that the people who are in our sales process are the right people. So we're doing a lot of front end uh, calling forward and what I would call a hand raising campaign in order to get those people in. Or maybe you're a mom and you receive or a dad and you receive this email. We're really teaching them to forward it to maybe somebody they know who's in that position. And that way we have the right people in our sales process with an opt-in video series that's specifically designed to give somebody value if they're caring for a child or a guardian of a child who has an incarcerated parent. So this work has been mind-blowingly rewarding. Um, I love my for-profit work. Um, if any of my for-profit clients are listening, I appreciate you. <laughs> and at the same time, I have never really experienced as a marketer the inner satisfaction that comes from doing something like this. I mean, I just can't thank both of you so much for bringing our organization in. We we have our team also helping with projects now. And um, it really, it's it's it lights you up to do this work as a for-profit, <laughs> mostly for-profit expert. 
Right. It is cool how this has all come together. I mean, there's clearly a need that I, I don't I didn't know. You know, before I met Heather, I didn't really know that you needed these ways to go grow these in place. And, and it was easy for me to say, who's the best in the world that I know about doing this? Bring Laura in. We have other resources that we've used, too, for other Leo clients who, for example, just have a website that's not performing. You know, that just doesn't have a crisp call to action. You know, a little button you've got to click to go take the action or good SEO search and optimization. So, you know, I think what we're learning is that these skills that we've used in franchising and for-profit businesses forever and ever and ever can and are being applied to the nonprofit space to help them grow in place. And it's um, and we're not done. I think we're just getting started uh, with Leo. Uh, and, and if I can take just one more example, the other thing, this scaling and or the replication, I think, is another thing that, you know, Heather and I have spoken about. And while we did this Build Strong Academy, that example about the trade job training school that started with a vision of a founder who wanted to touch a million, train a million people. And we're well on the way to that with six uh, academies open. I'm also working with one called Mission Animal Hospital in the Twin Cities. It's a nonprofit animal hospital who has a pay what you can type model. And we're using the same exact things we use for our for-profit clients to help them prepare to go scale and replicate. So I think whoever you are out there, I, I think, you know, if you need to scale in place and grow and invite people in, as Laura described, if you need help with, you know, your website, and just technically, if you think you've got something that can be replicated, you know, franchise, that's why I created Franchise for Good. And, and just so blessed to work with folks like you who can help identify the need and actually go execute. Yeah. And that's one thing we're really excited about going forward is not only are we scaling up this kind of front end piece of things, how do Leo partners make sure that they have ample demand that's being realized in their own local communities by going through a program with Laura and Dave, but also we're, you know, going to be focused on developing when that evidence is built, how do we then hand off to Dave and, uh, you know, Dave do his magic regarding getting these organizations to scale. And so we really believe that like, you know, client need and realization of that need or interest in that program or service plus innovative nonprofits, plus the evidence that shows it works, plus scale can really start to move the masses out of poverty in our country, which um, it's my strong belief we can do way better than we're doing today. And I believe this is a critical way of how we can do better. So good. Yeah, I love too that we're going to go at this. In a, so part of the magic of franchising is you have a lot of people doing similar things um, and then they collaborate and celebrate, and communicate, and commiserate together, that's part of a franchise system. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also what we're going to try to create here as we step into 2023, the three of us is go create cohorts of people, you know, the uh, nonprofits who are doing different things, all trying to target uh, poverty in some way, shape or form, but can get confused with one another. So far, these have been bespoke one off. And I'm encouraged. And I think it's going to be magical when we start to put people together in cohorts. So I, I don't know if you want to talk more about that, but I, I think that's just going to take us to a whole nother level and bring in one of these other things that franchising has been doing for a long time that we can apply here. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So in wrapping up, I think Dave would love to hear just your vision and steps forward. I'll share a little bit about ours for our organization. And then Heather, I would love for you to share yours and also share an opportunity for others who might be interested to connect with us in person. Hey, thanks, Laura. So look, I appreciate it. My, go check out my website. It's called franchiseforgood.org. The mission really is to go uh, scale nonprofits for good. That's it. That's my life mission. That's what I'm here to do. Uh, and that's really what it's about. We have a, a way we do it. So I think for those nonprofits out there, um, you know, my, we're going to try to come reach you and share some of these tools. If you need help along the way, we're going to help you along the way. If you want it for free, we'll, we'll share what we can. But that's the vision to go, you know, help thousands of people, um, you know, through the nonprofits that we support. I also think a call out to people like Laura, you know, that have these deep skills. I think it's going to take a village for us to do it. So I'm building a set of preferred partners. So attorneys and technical writers and web specialists and otherwise that I'm trying to pull together like minded folks like Laura who can go help uh, some of these nonprofits scale. So that's my vision for this thing. It continues to grow. Yeah. 
For our organization, so I have a company called Joy Brand Creative, we are starting to develop the talent in-house in order to be able to expand on projects like this. And it's really been um, an unexpected growth opportunity for our organization that everybody in our company is like me, I would pick me, I want to be on the next project. Because again, it's the, the rewarding aspect of it um, is is so uh, motivating. And I have completely actually reorganized my growth plan in order to work more with Dave and companies like Leo. So if you want to learn more about us, you can go to joybrandcreative.com. If any nonprofit work would be definitely a partnership between Dave and I. And I'm just really blessed to be here and do this work. I think it's you know, a lot of times we can't plan for the type of door that opens in our organization. And this has been something that was unexpected and I'm going into with arms wide open. So really just grateful to be here. Heather, yeah, share a little bit more about what we'll all be doing together in just a few months. Yeah. So, you know, when I look at Leo and look at our origin story um, about 10 years ago, it all started with two economists at Notre Dame, Jim Sullivan and Bill Evans, who started to wonder and question why certain groups of people weren't talking to one another. Mm -hmm. And those groups were really nonprofit organizations doing incredible work and academics who were studying poverty. And it was just that very simple idea of bringing together academics and providers and what that can mean for understanding solving and solving poverty. And what's been really neat about the partnership with Dave and Laura is it's really just kind of built off of our origin story as, as we've gone forward, we realize, okay, wait, we need some more unusual, unlikely partners in this mix, a franchise guy, a brand genius, like we need these other folks in here. And um, in order to achieve the mission that we have at Leo, which is all about reducing poverty through evidence-based programs and policies. As we go forward, our goal is, is creating evidence and ensuring that evidence gets put to use. And if you can just kind of imagine it, you know, right now, 1% of federal spending has evidence behind it. If we were able, through creating evidence and then replicating it, just to increase that to 10%, which is still not acceptable, but let's say we did that, that would be $100 billion a year in our country going to things that actually work. And so we're really committed to this. And how are we going to do this? We believe by coming together and working together and a strong commitment to build programs, to build evidence, to build clients, and to uh, build scalable programs and to scale them. And so Leo is having um, an event um, coming up uh, at the University of Notre Dame on April 13th and 14th. Uh, it is the Outsmarting Poverty Signature Event, and it will be two days of um, action pack fun and learning and um, um, sharing with one another between multiple audiences, philanthropists to policymakers. Um, we will have nonprofits there and academics there. And we're really excited because one of our uh, signature breakout sessions will be with Dave and Laura and Corner to Corner, who you heard us talk about, walking through what that experience uh, was like and tools that they learned along the way. Uh, but we would love to have um, you attend. We'd love for you to sign up. It's going to be a great way to connect with colleagues, a great way to make connections, and a great way to get super jazzed about um, the ways we can really reduce poverty in our country by creating evidence-based programs and ensuring they go to scale. And so if you're interested, you can feel free to go to uh, leo.ndu.edu excuse me, leo.nd.edu. Um, and on our home screen is a button you can click, which is the Outsmarting Poverty Signature Event with information on keynotes and breakout speakers and opportunities uh, to register. So we'd love to see all of you there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heather, for sharing that incredible vision. Thank you, Dave, for me bringing us all together. And thank you for everybody who's listening right now. We appreciate you being here and tuning in and learning more about how to use for-profit strategies in the nonprofit world. We'll see you soon.